Hey guys, today we're going to be reviewing this 2013 Chevrolet Camaro RS. You guys are probably thinking, really an RS? But I mean, just look at this thing. This thing is an absolute track beast. This owner's got the whole uh, bumblebee paint job setup going on here. And he's got not one, but two Autobots badges. And I mean, these badges are like at least 50 plus horsepower. So two of them, I mean, you could do the math. This thing's an absolute beast. All right, I'm done for the Transformers jokes for now, but I mean, in all seriousness, this 2013 uh, Camaro RS comes with a 3.6 liter V6, putting down a very, very respectable 323 brake horsepower, right at uh, 6,800 RPMs, and 278 foot-pounds of torque at 4,800 RPMs. So it's very obvious that this um, car really shouldn't be overlooked just because it's a V6. Obviously, a lot of these cars can definitely get a lot of hate, but I mean, just looking at this specific car, this is a 2LS trim, and it is obviously just rear wheel drive. And basically the 2LS is the only trim that actually doesn't come with a limited slip differential in the rear from factory. And it is also, it, it basically also comes with the automatic transmission, which we're gonna be talking about in a second. Now staying on topic of the exterior of this car, probably the one of my most favorite features of this car is the factory 20 inch rims that Chevy puts on these. Now, I don't really like them for their looks. They're definitely not the most flashy uh, rims out there, but they definitely help with the handling of this car, which we're gonna get to in a second with the suspension. But just to stay on the exterior, now this um, factory color is called Rally Yellow from Chevrolet. Now these uh, stripes right here, they're actually, they're not painted on, they're just vinyl stripes, but they, they definitely have seen some wear. But I mean, obviously, you know, going with the whole, I guess, bumblebee paint scheme, they definitely make the car look very good and it definitely pops against that, uh, the rally yellow paint job. Now to go into some of the dimensions here, the exterior dimensions, the total length of this car from factory is 190.4 inches. The width of this, the width of this car is 75.5 inches. The wheelbase of this car is 112.3 inches. The front track is at 63.7 inches, and the rear track is a little bit larger at 64.1 inches. Now Chevy kind of hides that difference between these very thick uh, rear, I guess, quarter panels you ha they have here. Now, I absolutely love this car from behind. This is completely stock. There's nothing really pampered on, like modified on it or anything. This is how it comes from factory, and it just looks. I mean, very wide on the side. I definitely like this look a lot. Now this car's weight distribution from factory is actually 52% in the front and 48% in the rear. So it's not a perfect 50-50, but it's definitely well balanced. Another thing I found kind of funny when researching this car is actually Chevy states that this, this uh, Camaro's maximum towing capacity, in case you ever wanted to tow anything with your Camaro, is actually just an even 1,000 pounds. I'm really interested to see if that's actually correct because I mean, hey, maybe it is, maybe it's not, maybe you could tow more. Who knows? I doubt anyone's gonna be towing anything in a Camaro anytime soon. But I mean, if you've ever towed anything in a Camaro, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear about it. Now moving right along with this car, I'm just gonna talk about some components of the suspension. Now from factory, the suspension is very well engineered from Chevrolet. It's basically a four wheel and completely independent suspension system. And in the back, it's actually got a multi-link rear suspension. And from factory, completely stock, this car comes with front and rear stabilizer bars. And up front, there's uh, actually McPherson style struts. So that being said, that is, uh, those are the basic reasons why uh, you see oftentimes at car shows and at Cars and Coffee when someone's trying to uh, show off. Oftentimes it's the Mustangs the one, that are the ones hitting the crowd because when Chevrolet is designing their cars, they actually you know care about their suspension. Whereas when Ford's, des when Ford's designing their cars in their factory, they just, they just bolt up some stuff on there. They hope it works. They definitely, <laughs> there's definitely a big difference between, especially even this year, Camaro compared to this year Mustang, because I know for a fact the 2013 Mustangs were still live axle, 
So that's one thing that's definitely a lot better in the Camaro than the Mustang. All right, so now I actually got the hood popped on this car. And one thing that I don't like right away, and this isn't really a rip on Chevy, Camaro, or even this specific car, but like all the modern cars I feel like now, they have plastic just covering everything. And I guess to the regular person, to the consumer, I guess it makes it look cleaner or whatever, if they, especially if they don't know what they're looking at. But I mean, to normal car enthusiasts, I don't know if it's just me. I mean, comment down below if you guys feel the same way. But I know most car enthusiasts I talk to definitely feel like they like actually looking at the engine, looking at what they're working on, know, knowing what's wrong, and not having just plastic all over this. But anyway, to get back on topic, obviously that, this isn't a rip on this specific car. Chevy's just kind of following a trend with this. I mean, it's whatever. It is what it is. But basically just stating what I said before. Now this is a 3.6 liter V6 and from factory, it actually makes 270 foot, 278 foot pounds of torque at 4,800 RPMs and 323 brake horsepower at 6,800 RPMs. Now that's definitely nothing to ignore, especially coming from a V6, but be, since it basically how it's making this power is it is a four valve per cylinder, very well engineered engine. It, it has a double overhead cam, double, it has double overhead camshafts and it is actually the block itself is a is a cast aluminum block with cast in place iron bore lines now the ignition system is also an electronic individual coil on plug system which includes a individual cylinder cylinder knock control and extended life platinum tipped spark plugs which is pretty cool now, another, two more facts about this uh, this engine is that it actually, from factory, has a compression, compression ratio of 11 and a half to one. And it actually has the rev, the rev limiter from factory is set at uh, 7,200 RPMs. Now the fuel economy for this specific car, now this is the, um, this car has obviously the 3.6 liter V6, but since it is an LS2, it does have the hydromatic 6 l50 six speed automatic transmission with a final drive ratio of 3.27 so they're definitely not steep gears they're definitely highway highway gears which is definitely something that is a plus especially on on an automatic transmission it means you're definitely going to save a lot of gas and it's definitely going to be a very smooth ride now anyway going back to fuel economy the eight the fuel economy that this car comes with from factory with that engine and transmission setup is 18 miles per gallon during city driving and actually a whopping 29 miles per gallon during highway driving for a combined total of 22 combined miles per gallon. Now some of you might be saying, wow, 29 miles per gallon during the highway? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a V6, it's not a V8, it's very well engineered, it's got a factory tune on it, it's not, I mean, worked to the gills, it doesn't have this crazy fuel sucking tune on it, but Honestly, the transmission and how the gearing set up, it's not that much of a su surprise to me just looking at it because, I mean, these cars are getting basically more and more well engineered. Now, obviously this is a 2013, so this is a little bit older, but I mean, it's still a great car. All right, so now going into the interior of this car, it's definitely not super roomy, but I mean, if you're getting this car or you're getting a Mustang or anything really like in this class, in this pony car class you're not looking for <laughs> that much room but chevrolet from factory states that is that this maximum seating capacity is two in the front and uh two in the rear now i'm just going to go over the dimensions really quick so in the front chevrolet states that this car comes with 37.4 inches of front headroom 42.4 inches of front leg room 56.9 and and 56.9 inches of front shoulder room put this passenger seat up and left the driver's seat back just to kind of show you guys how you know useless I guess these back seats are but I mean you could fit people back here if they're small <laughs> but I mean I'm just gonna go over the dimensions real quick but yeah if you're definitely interested in buying this car or Mustang or uh, you know Challenger or anything like that anything with two doors really generally the back seats are kind of very small 
but Chevy states that in the rear, this car actually has 35.3 inches of uh, rear headroom, only 29.9 inches of rear legroom, and 42.5 inches of rear shoulder room. All right, so now I'm actually sitting in the driver's seat. We're about to go on the test drive, but the first thing that I really don't like about this car is just the visibility. Now, I'm, I have a Mustang, I'm used to, I'm used to like this pony car style, but definitely when you're looking at the front and even when you're looking at the sides here, there's a big gap or there's a small gap between the top of the door and the bottom of the uh, roof here. Now, that being said, it might not be this big issue, especially I'll know more when I'm driving it, but I know for a fact that in the Mustangs, there's definitely a lot more vis visibility here and a lot more visibility here. The doors don't really come up as much, but basically I just wanted to go over some things that the Camaro, well Chevy, did really well with this car. Now this specific trim is a automatic, so it actually comes with these factory paddle shifters here. I'm really interested to see how they uh, perform while you're driving them. Now to engage them, all you have to do is put this car in, I guess this manual, this M mode, and you can use the paddle shifters and it has a little display up here that tells you which gear you're in. Now, another thing unique to this specific trim is that it actually comes with a Chevy MyLink navigation system right in here. It's a touch screen. Now, once you start this up, it shows you, it pops up, it says Chevy MyLink and it's basically got a whole GPS in it. Another pretty cool feature is that it does have a frameless rear view mirror, which I thought was very, very, um, unique and not only unique but uh kind of ingenious really i mean i don't know why more people haven't thought of that i know you know the year is 2020 this is an older car and i know that nowadays people are even chevy is coming out with these basically these rear view mirrors that are actually cameras in the back i'm kind of old school i like the mirrors but i definitely like these frameless mirrors it just gives you more a lot more surface area at least it feels like it does and another cool thing is i see right here it comes with a onstar post collision um i guess safety system that basically you get in an accident you know the airbags are deployed you're sitting here you don't know what to do and basically onstar is called automatically i know a lot of cars have that and a lot of vehicles have that nowadays but i definitely just want to touch on that i thought that is very cool this thing obviously already I said it before, this thing has a lot of safety features, but that's just another thing that definitely impressed me. Now let me um, put my camera down and let's go for a drive in this thing. All right, so now we're actually going with this car. Um, the steering is very, very responsive. It also has this really cool heads up display that basically, it actually looks like it's in the front of the car, which I think is a little bit wacky but I mean, I'm using the paddle shifters. Now this isn't a, you know, I said before, this isn't a dual clutch, triple clutch transmission, anything crazy like that, that we're seeing out with the new 2020 GT 500s or, you know, the ZL ones or stuff like that. But I mean, for paddle shifters, these things respond. Yeah, they respond very quickly, which I like a lot. Now, braking is very, very responsive as well. Braking is almost, I mean, too responsive, I think. But that's very nice because this does come with the vented 14-inch rotors from stock. They're only single piston. They're only single piston calibers on all four wheels. But I mean, yeah, this thing, uh, it definitely drives extremely smooth. This can be a very, very fun car. Um, great starter car, for sure. It downshifts. Amazing. I mean, you don't have to do anything to downshift. Now, I normally, I have a manual, so I'm used to, you know, I'm used to a stick. I generally don't like automatics, but since this does have paddle shifters, I think this, I think this kind of makes, I guess, it being an automatic more fun, if that makes any sense. Yeah, this thing, I mean, wow. This has a lot, a lot of torque for, for a V6. And we're just gonna be turning around here. 
and going back but yeah i hope you guys love uh like today's video uh, make sure to smash that like button if you like this content if you like my reviews make sure to share it with your friends it helps out a lot obviously subscribe that helps out a ton and just stay tuned for more content like this i should be coming to you guys with both radically modified cars and completely bone stock cars like this one but yeah uh thank you for watching today's episode and i'll see you guys in the next one this is fun <laughs>